Today's storyline is Deadpool and Spider-Man Itsy Bitsy. This is the one where basically their genetic material is merged to create a child of Spider-Man and Deadpool. And it's a pretty fun storyline. This is the comic story and channel where I take your favorite comic books and I break them down into digestible bites. I read them back to you as an audio drama because I just have a lot of fun doing this. And I hope you guys enjoy. And if you do, make sure you check out our main channel, Comic Story. On that note, let's get into it. Our story begins with our heroes arguing about their current situation, which is them being tied up in hell at the hands of Dormammu. But Deadpool being Deadpool has a plan which involves him popping out and dislocating his hip, which gives Spider-Man just enough room to pull out one of Deadpool's katanas, freeing them. As the two of them get down, the mindless ones start to swarm around them, and now it's time for Spider-Man's plan. He webs up Deadpool and he begins swinging him around into the mindless ones. After defeating the group, Deadpool thanks Spider-Man because that swing actually knocked his hip back into place, and Dormammu begins his villain monologue. So Deadpool decides that this is probably a good time to do the whole flash back thing to explain why they're in hell fighting Dormammu. Before they got teleported to hell, Spider-Man was in the middle of fighting Hydro-Man when Deadpool came to visit him wanting to show him this cool new app that he's been using ever since he told his therapist that he didn't understand the whole moral contract that society is built on or something like that. Deadpool spins the alignment wheel on the app landing on chaotic neutral and he says that he loves this one because it means he can do whatever he thinks is best like give lots of hugs and do the BAMF thing. Before Spider-Man can even ask what the BAMF thing is, the two of them disappear and Hydro Man looks down and just says, okay, moving on. Back in the current time though, the two continue to fight off the next wave of mindless ones when Deadpool states that he has an idea. He'll begin taking the brains out of his pouches. Don't ask why he has brains. He's gonna take the brains out of his pouches and shove them into the mindless ones, making them the mindful ones. He begins jumping around, stuffing the brains into each and every single one of them. Except for one, he accidentally puts a grenade into that one. Dormammu then yells at the mindless ones to flay the skin off of Deadpool and Spider-Man, but now the mindful ones ask exactly where did it say in their job description that they were to flay someone. Another one then says that one of them just had his head explode and he bets Dormammu didn't even know his name. It was Carl, Carl! While Dormammu and the mindless ones begin to argue, Spider-Man says go ahead and do that BAMF thing, getting them out of there once again. And when they return to the surface world, Deadpool shows Spider-Man how he does his little BAMF teleportation thing. It's a little creature that was a present from his wife, Shikla. And the collar on this creature keeps the whole thing in check and, but before Deadpool can finish, Spider-Man snaps the collar off of the creature and he starts to swing away, stating that he has some things that he needs to do for Peter Parker. Deadpool then looks down at the creature telling him, you better not do it, you little blue BAMF. However, Spider-Man doesn't get very far when Deadpool Deadpool shows back up and Spider-Man tells him that he's not really in the mood to deal with him right now. But then he sees Deadpool's missing part of his arm and he asks, did he do that? Because he regrets nothing. Deadpool states that he's not really here for that and with his stubby arm, he points up stating that the water dork that he let escape earlier kind of leveled up. As Spider-Man turns around, he sees that Hydro-Man is now much larger than before, swinging down on top of them. The two of them manage to dodge the attack and Hydro-Man demands a hundred million dollars or he'll drown the entire city in its own filth. Spider-Man looks at Deadpool and he asks if he has any incinerary grenades and how good is his healing factor? Deadpool says, yes, and my healing factor is awesome. Just look at my arm. It's almost back after that latest bamf. Wait, why? Spider-Man webs up Deadpool and their grenade pins and he throws all of it into Hydro-Man, causing him to explode. Afterwards, Spider-Man begins to hose down his suit, telling the upper half of Deadpool to never come near him again. And Deadpool looks at him, telling him that he's trying to change. Maybe if they palled around a bit, he could, and Spider-Man cuts him off stating, what, learn how to be a good hero? Deadpool says, okay, He'll go kick some kittens or something so Spider-Man won't help him. But if he ever wants to hang out and maybe binge watch Grey's Anatomy or something, just give him a call. Spider-Man begins to head off and he begins to think about it. the only thing that he needs to do is hate Deadpool. It'll make things so much easier. A tad bit later, Deadpool begins to head off to take care of some real business and he swipes his app to a new morality. Heroic good. The universe has spoken. He's got to kill the living crap out of Peter Parker since, well, Peter Parker's evil. And hopefully him and Spider-Man can still be buds after he ganks his boss. The next day, Spider-Man gets a call from Miles Morales, the currently young Spider-Man, telling him that he's just thinking about how awesome it is to be them. I mean, they're Spider-Men. And apparently, Deadpool's on a mugging spree. Spider-Man rushes over to see Miles and finds Deadpool's actually just offering free hugs. And after pulling him aside by his butt, he asks Deadpool what does he want. Deadpool tells him that he just needs to know more about his boss, Peter Parker. Is he really an evil genius or just another evil villain? To which both Spider-Man and Miles respond with a combo punch. Suddenly, the entire goblin army begins to attack them. And while Deadpool falls to his inevitable impalement, he notices something. Not everyone is freaking out about this goblin attack. That's what the experts call a clue. 
While Spider-Man and Miles fight off the Goblin army, Deadpool starts to drive up the side of the building with the dead buggy and he grabs Spider-Man. Miles tells him to let him go, there's goblins everywhere! But Deadpool begins to shoot both of their wrists, causing a short in their webware, which is the wearable tech that they both have, which was created by Parker Industries. The three of them begin to fall and Spider-Man realizes that the whole thing was a hallucination. Someone hacked into their webware. The dead buggy then leaps into the air, catching them all, and Deadpool says that it had to have been Peter Parker. Spider-Man tells him to trust him, it is not Peter Parker. And Deadpool just says, whatever. Can we just find where that signal came from or whatever? Over at Parker Industries, the one who hacked into the webware was Mysterio. Mysterio begins his villain monologue on how Peter Parker being good is only an illusion, and as he finishes, Deadpool drives through the wall, running Mysterio over. Spider-Man jumps from the car and he tells Deadpool to look for Mysterio while he shuts down the webware transmission. After breaking the transmission, Spider-Man turns to see Deadpool performing CPR on Beck. Once everything is taken care of, Beck is transported to receive medical attention, and Spider-Man tells Deadpool that he did a good job today. If he ever needs him, give him a call. Spider-Man then leaves, and Deadpool says that he needs to check on a few things while he's here. He leaves, and he heads into a door leading to the back of the building, and he finds out why Peter is really an evil villain. Parker Industries is conducting experiments on people. Deadpool begins to slaughter the scientists and tells them that normally he likes the amputation jokes, but he has to make a call first. Voice dial, patient zero. A voice answers, asking if he's reconsidered the request, and Deadpool tells him, yeah, he's all in. The man begins to say thank you to Deadpool, and Deadpool tells him that actually it'll be a pleasure putting Parker into the ground. Have a nice day. The next day, Spider-Man and Deadpool begin to hang out, and Spider-Man tells him that he got him a present. He shoots Deadpool with a little device, and he tells him it's basically a lie detector. Deadpool's earned himself a second chance with saving Mysterio, so this is just to make sure that Deadpool's actually changing for good. Deadpool tells him that telling the truth isn't going to be a prop for the love of Blue Ivy. A short while later, after destroying his own charity event for kids, Deadpool tells Spider-Man, fine, no more games. I'll show you the real Deadpool. So later that night, he takes Spider-Man to see Ellie, his daughter. Spider-Man is shocked, and Deadpool introduces her. And Ellie tells Deadpool all about her week, and that she got an A in school. She looks at Spider-Man and tells him that her daddy loves him. But before she can keep going, Deadpool tells her that that's enough. It's time for her to get ready for bed. Deadpool tells him that no one knows about her. Hell, he didn't for a long time either. But until he stops playing the dumbass and turns into a real boy, she's gonna stay here away from him, safe from everything. Deadpool thinks about how he hopes he passed Spider-Man's judgy test of character, or whatever you want to call it. But once Spider-Man goes inside, he receives a call from his contact. While Deadpool was keeping Spider-Man distracted, the contact was running tests on Spider-Man. And the contact tells him that it'll be hard to get around him and to Peter. But Deadpool tells him not to worry. He has it figured out. And when the contract asks what it is, Deadpool tells him he's gonna use friendship. So later, Deadpool comes up with the best way to enjoy their friendship, by going to the club. When Spider-Man arrives, he tells Deadpool that Spider-Man can't just go clubbing, and that's not how his image is. But Deadpool has already thought about that, and he gives him the image inducer. And just like that, Spider-Man is now Leonardo DiCaprio, respectable owner of a chain of adult novelty stores. Spider-Man looks at himself, and he sees that he's now black. And Deadpool tells him everyone wants to be black, unless you're racist. Spider-Man tells him that he's not, it's just that. But before he can finish, Deadpool tells him, good, because he can't stand racist. Also, so his date Jenny's profile says that she loves black guys. Once inside, Deadpool introduces Spider-Man to his date, and the two of them hit it right off. And they kind of leave Deadpool as the third wheel. So Spider-Man asks, when is Shikla gonna get here? And Deadpool says, ha, no, take my wife out? No, my date should be getting here real soon. And with a crack of thunder and lightning, the mighty Thor appears. Now this Thor is actually Jane Foster. If you wanna know what's going on with that, check out our mighty Thor videos. But anyway, Thor calls up Deadpool asking, what is the emergency? And he tells her that there's a crisis. There's 10 barrels of mead and no Norse goddess to drink them. So she grabs Deadpool and asks, what game is he playing? But soon, Spider-Man's date Jenny begins to change because she's a demon and she doesn't like Asgardians like Thor. Spider-Man begins to change back into his Spider-Man suit and he asks Deadpool if he knew that Jenny was an Asgardian hating succubus. And Deadpool says, well, she's Shikla's cousin. So I didn't know, but it was kind of expected. As Thor and the succubus continue to fight, Deadpool says not to worry, he's got this covered and he presses a button. And soon the floor begins to reveal a mud pit and the girls stop fighting. Thor grabs Deadpool again and asks him what they should do with them now. But she already knows, he and Spider-Man will dance for Thor and Jenny's entertainment. The two dance the dance of the Spidey Pool on the blessed Thursday known as Ladies Night. And afterwards, after everything's settled down, Spider-Man and Deadpool leave and they laugh about the whole situation. Spider-Man says that he actually had an amazing time tonight. And they need to do this again, minus the tricking the thunder goddess thing. So Spider-Man heads out and Deadpool tells him that they will do it again soon. But he has something to take care of first. The next morning at Peter Parker's apartment, he's woken up by the sound of a doorbell. And when he goes to get what he thinks is his breakfast, he stands in the crosshairs of Deadpool's pistol. And blam! 
Deadpool stands over Peter Parker's body, thinking about how easy that was. Hopefully him and Spider-Man can still be friends after killing him and all. Deadpool heads back home to his wife Shikla, and the two of them leave for hell so that they can watch Peter Parker get tortured. But when they get to the torture room, they see that Peter Parker isn't there. Deadpool asks, where the hell is Peter? Literally, where the hell is the soul of Peter Parker? And the torturers ask if he's sure that Peter Parker had a reservation in hell because he's not on their list. Deadpool says, well, yeah, he did kill him. Maybe we should go check on that. So Shikla and him go back to Peter's apartment and Peter is still there dead on the ground right where Deadpool left him. Deadpool says that there's only one way to correct this. Have Shikla bring him back to life and kill him again. Kind of like turning it off and on again thing, but the opposite. Except when they check back in with the minions, Peter Parker still hasn't shown up. Shikla looks at Deadpool and asks if he's gonna say it or does she have to? And Deadpool says, yep, I messed up. I got played. So Deadpool knows that he needs to fix this and he asks Shikla how flexible she is with this whole death do us part thing. Over in Limbo though, Mysterio has begun to torture Peter with illusions, which Peter knows are not real. They still hurt. He watches and he tells him how much he enjoys watching Peter Parker in such agony. But before he can continue his villain monologue, Deadpool appears punching Mysterio's dome. Peter calls out to Deadpool, telling him that he's in hell. And Deadpool tells him, oh no he's not. He's worked in hell. This sir, this is no hell. He then takes out his gun and he begins opening fire on all of the illusions until they disappear. Peter looks up at him and he asks, exactly whose blood are you covered in, Deadpool? And Deadpool tells him not to worry about it. Right now, they need to focus on fighting off the darkness. Deadpool goes on to state that he needs to think of something that will help them, but not something cute like a deer or a childhood toy, unless it has a rocket launcher. And Peter already knows what will help them, his image of Spider-Man. The two of them begin to fight off the Mysterio that is holding Peter prisoner in this limbo. And after defeating him, Peter begins to see something or someone. Peter Parker asks, who are you? And the figure tells him that he is the null, the void, the hell that hungers, and he is going to tell him a secret. Elsewhere, Deadpool tries to look for Peter Parker, but instead finds death. The link Deadpool has to stay in limbo begins to fade, and he tells death that he made a mistake, and he sent the wrong guy here. He needs to come back. Not like a zombie or something, just a normal human being. Death begins to ask him why, and Deadpool tells her, because I'm trying to change. I'm sick of being the joke. She tells him that there will be a price, and Deadpool asks if it's his, then he'll pay it. And the two begin to kiss. Then the link breaks, and Deadpool is staring at Shikla. Deadpool says that he can explain, but she tells him that he's sleeping in the nail room tonight. He has death breath. Back in Peter's apartment though, Peter Parker wakes up, hearing the voice telling him the secret, that he'll never find happiness, only emptiness. As Peter looks down, he sees a stuffed Deadpool with a card. And when he reads it, it says, he's sorry about the whole killing him thing. He was kind of tricked by another guy. Please don't tell Spider-Man. He'll go ahead and take the guy down that tricked him, all free of charge. So don't worry. Except, over in Parker Industries, everyone hasn't noticed Peter Parker being gone. In fact, he's been there the whole time. But as Peter gets into the car, that Peter takes off the face mask, and he reveals himself to be patient zero. Over at Parker Industries, Peter sits in his office staring at the birthday card that Deadpool left for him when he woke up from being dead. Anna Maria goes over a list of villains who could have possibly put the hit out on him, but Peter tells her that this is someone new. Someone good, because they went as far as to replace him while he was dead. Anna Maria then asks, if that's the case, what did this person take? And Peter sits thinking about the voice that told him he is missing something from his life. So Anna Maria asks again, and Peter tells her he knows what they took, but for now, they need to start tracking the beacons that he left inside of Deadpool's pouches. Elsewhere, Wade Wilson begins his surveillance on the glass building of the person who hired him to kill Peter Parker. As he watches, Spider-Man's voice tells Wade that he killed Peter Parker because he thought he was a monster. And Wade says, yeah, but I did bring him back to life. I even tucked him into bed and Peter stomps him, telling him, I need to know one thing. Was the whole thing a lie? You wanted to start a new chapter or was it a lie to get to my boss? But before Deadpool can answer, the glass house begins to shine. And Peter says that they're gonna finish this after they deal with this obvious death trap. Inside, a man drinks his wine from a straw. And he says that it's his big day, you know, his rebirthday. From outside, Spider-Man and Wade crash in and Spider-Man says, I'm assuming you're patient Zero, right? And Zero tells him, yeah, but go attack my monstrosities. Wade asks him, are they human? I mean, I was gonna say gross, but human works, so that means no killing, right? One of the creatures charges at Spider-Man and he says, no, we are not killing them. Zero tells him that he thought he altered their genetics so that they were no longer human. And as Wade holds another creature in a headlock, Spider-Man says that he's picking up signals coming in from the devices on the back of the creature's necks. So Spider-Man and Wade start ripping the devices out of their necks and as they fall to the ground, they begin screaming in pain and they beg to be killed. 
Zero smiles, telling them, yeah, that was a control unit. But it was also a pain dampener, dopamine booster, and most importantly, the thing that stopped them from knowing what they'd become. So, now that they're self-aware, they're basically going to lose any will to live. Great job, guys! Zero then says that he's pretty sure they have a lot of questions, but Spider-Man stops him, telling him, no, I don't. And Wade tells him, really? Because I'm completely lost right now, and would like some answers. As the two of them jump back into fighting, Spider-Man explains that this is the guy who hired Wade to kill Peter Parker, and once he was dead, he became Peter Parker and stole every piece of data that they had on genetic splicing. A large creature then appears, and Zero says, Well, that's close, but not all of it. Really, you should be asking why, out of all of the powerful beings, I chose you. The large creature then grabs onto Peter, and Wade tells him, Screw it, I'm going in hot! And he shoots the creature's arms. As Spider-Man jumps away, he tells Wade to stop patient Zero. Shoot him in the kneecaps, ankles, anything! Wade stops for a moment, and he tells Spider-Man, that with this new attitude, I'm so turned on right now and seriously terrified of you. Spider-Man goes back to fighting off the large creature while Wade tries to stop Zero from escaping by throwing grenades. And then Peter shouts, This is a glass house! And Wade realizes it by asking, And? Zero walks through a portal and tells them that he'll see them downstairs, and then the grenades explode. The blast shoots the two of them down into the basement where Spider-Man lands and Wade sort of lands. Zero stands at a device and he tells them that he took the name Patient Zero because he was infected not by a disease, but by men. Just like Spider-Man and Wade. As Zero goes on, Spider-Man and Wade jump back up, firing away, but webs and bullets pass right through Zero. He then activates the device next to him, telling them that this device here is a superconductor that attracts very specific elements. Wade shouts, That's too many words! Is it a bomb? And Peter tells him, no, it's a glass magnet and we're in a glass house. The device goes off and a blinding light shines into the room. Spider-Man manages to create a web barrier to protect them while Wade tried to protect them. As shards of glass stick into him, Spider-Man says that the webbing will last for a few hours, but now they have time. How much of them being friends is real? And Wade tells him, I messed up! I admitted it! The only reason I killed Peter Parker is because I thought it was a scumbag, and I didn't tell you because I didn't want to hurt your feelings knowing that your boss was really a bad guy. As Wade removes his hood, he tells Spider-Man that he's trying to change. But Peter doesn't say a word. The reason he stopped talking is because Wade's face is healed. And Wade asks, is it glass in my teeth? Elsewhere, Zero tells a woman that he wasn't sure which flavor she wanted, so she got them both. But he promises once he's done, she'll be one and the same as them. A few days later, Spider-Man and Wade find themselves battling against the hateful Hexed while they search for Zero. As Spider-Man punches Squid, Wade tosses a grenade at Gibbon, telling him that if this crime spree doesn't work, they should consider getting a job as a stripper. And Wade Rabbit tells him, that's sexist! But Wade says, actually, I wasn't talking to you. As the blast blows up Gibbon, he shouts, he thinks I'm handsome! After throwing Squid into Swarm, telling them, if you guys are going to team up, you really need to consider getting a team with better talent. And Ox then shouts, Ox am sad now. I smother my feelings with violence. And Boar Bear Guy says, for the record, I do have a business degree. Wade looks at the two of them and tells them, you both look like Inside Out and Zootopia had an embarrassing idiot child. Oh wait, you're an animal themed team. And Spider-Man asks him, you just got that? After shooting Boar Bear Guy in the butt, Wade says that the bee guy kind of throws off the whole thing. And just then White Rabbit stabs Wade in the back. As she jumps away, she tells him, I like you. I would like to do things with your corpse. And Wade tells her, Thank you for choosing my heart and not my face. Kind of been broken so many times, I don't even notice anymore. Spider-Man swings in, kicking White Rabbit away and shouts, Kicks are for kids! And Wade tells him, While I appreciate your new mean attitude, you kind of just said kick kids. Spider-Man and Wade continue beating on the groove, whether it is kicking or blowing them up. And then they soon realize that one of Spider-Man's webs to Squid is basically choking him to death. So Spider-Man takes out a web solvent to remove the web, but it's not working. Spider-Man tells Wade to give him the smallest knife that he has, and Wade tells him, Yeah, about that. Do you remember Gibbon ever being stabbed like that? Before Spider-Man can ask who, a sword flies through the air into Squid's head. Suddenly, a voice begins to sing, Itsy Bitsy Spider. And Wade says that there's a new player that joined their game. He starts looking around, asking if Ashton Kutcher is going to show again. And then an elevator drops on Boar Bear Guy. Spider-Man shouts, who's there? And then stops and says that his spider sense isn't detecting anything. A wire falls from the ceiling, grabbing White Rabbit by the throat, and then more swords are thrown into Ox. Spider-Man manages to shoot a web into the controls to stop the wire, but as White Rabbit falls down, she points over asking if they see that. And Wade says, sweet holy crap on a stick! Across the room, a spider slash Deadpool creation says she made them something. Do they like it? Spider-Man shouts, who are you? And the woman tells him, Don't be scared. I'm one of you, just like you. Spider-Man and Wade try to catch her, but the woman crawls up the walls, telling them, Maybe next time you can touch me. As the woman retreats, the doors to the warehouse fly open, and SWAT teams begin to surround Spider-Man and Wade, telling them that they're under arrest. 
Later, as the sun begins to rise, Spider-Man and Wade sit on top of a bridge eating ice cream. As the two of them meet, Wade says that he wants him to know, and Spider-Man tells him he doesn't have to. But Wade continues telling him, Thanks for believing in me. I've never really felt so good in my life, and I owe it to you. Spider-Man tells him the feeling's mutual, though he didn't do much. He's a good guy, and good guys stick together. A little while later, over at Wade's secret man cave apartment, Wade asks Spider-Man if he's busy playing Overwatch now. And Spider-Man responds with, I am crushing Overwatch. Swagman 3600 just got served a little dessert with a main course of ponage. Wade tells him that's nice. They are wanted for murder, so when he's done, they should probably go look for the blue punk rock spiral girl. We're gonna call her Itsy Bitsy, Spider-Man says. That's lame, Deadpool tells him. You're lame! So the two of them talk. Spider-Man tells Wade not to worry so much. His spider tracer has been sending out a signal for the last few hours on the same frequency as Patient Zero's teleport tech. Wade asks him what does that mean, and Spider-Man says, well, Zero had a vendetta, making monstrosities in his basement. And then suddenly, we get attacked by a blue woman, so I invited him over. A portal opens up behind Wade, and he tells Spider-Man, you're a raging hemorrhoid of spider eggs, and I hate you so much. Zero steps through the portal, electrocuting Wade, shouting, I come in peace! Help me! Spider-Man looks at Wade and asks, why? And Zero says that he just wanted to have one last shot on the idiot before he surrendered. Spider-Man waits for a moment and then says that these are acceptable turns of surrender. Wade rolls on the ground in pain, stating, No! My groin is charged with the power of cosmic! Zero tells them, look, no more games, no more fighting. You want to know everything? Fine, just promise you'll protect me. Spider-Man begins to state, they promise, but to start, who the hell are you? Zero takes off his mask, asking if they seriously still haven't figured it out yet. Wade goes first. Freddy Krueger's love child with Abby from Dance Moms? And then Spider-Man follows up. Deadpool's left cheek from an alternate universe given human form. And Wade continues. Chad from The Bachelor after too many flaming shots. And Spider-Man finishes. Every before image from Proactive merged into a walking acne culture. Zero begins to shout, I literally made a deal with the devil to execute revenge on Deadpool and Spider-Man. This is why I hated you. Open your eyes. I'm... But as Zero is about to say his name, a voice says, Boring. And suddenly Zero's body begins to fall into pieces. Wade jumps on to Spider-Man shouting, "Aye! He has Picasso powers of self-cuism! I hid my fear of stupidity. P.S. I'm pretty sure we're not alone. Itsy Bitsy then hangs out of the ceiling, stating, Zero was just another egomaniac in a half mask with gnarly skin. How 90s can a person get? Wade opens fire, and then Spider-Man grabs a hold of the dead buggy and flings it into the ceiling. Wade shouts, What was that, you jackhole? I love that car! Itsy Bitsy tells them that they shouldn't have fight. She doesn't want to hurt them, unless they're into that sort of thing. Webs begin whipping around, cutting off Wade's ear, and he tells Itsy Bitsy to come on down so we can spank her full of bullets. As the fight goes on, Itsy Bitsy tells him, I really don't don't want to fight. How about we skip all that stuff and we have a three-way team up already? She grabs onto Wade's grenades and throws them behind her, telling them, Toad cereal time out, and then there's an explosion. That looked badass, right? All backlit. Shapow! The three rush into fighting as Itsy Bitsy grabs Spider-Man in a headlock and begins shooting Wade. She tells them, come on, we have a greater calling together. Itsy Bitsy then starts punching Spider-Man and as Wade tries to stop her, she shoots acid on his chest. As a hole begins to burn through him, Wade tells her that this really knocks her down on the DP sexy scale. Itsy Bitsy takes out one of her swords and holds it above Spider-Man's head, but before she can bring it down, Wade quickly cuts off her hands. She turns around stabbing another of her swords into Wade and tells him, That's interrupting. That's rude. As Spider-Man and Wade lay there, Spider-Man says they can't even touch her, and Itsy Bitsy tells them, This is your last chance. Join me or it's goodbye. Wade tells him that he's got it, and he asks, How good is your healing factor, Spider-Man? Spider-Man says he doesn't have one, and Itsy Bitsy says that he's probably referring to the hundreds of pounds of C4 in the trunk of the buggy. Let's give it a whirl. Wade tells Spider-Man, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. And Spider-Man asks him, really? And Wade kind of gets rid of that idea. No, getting blown up hurts like a mother. From the fire, Itsy Bitsy stands up as her bones crack back into place. And after straightening her head, she says that this is why you never meet your heroes. Whatever, there's work to be done. And with that, Itsy Bitsy swings away, singing, The Itsy Bitsy Spider. But the thing that we discover about teleportation is that there can be some weird drawbacks. Like, if two people teleport together, they can end up mashed together. Which Wade happens to be looking at as they walk by the treehouse that they are in. Spider-Man asks what he's looking at, and Deadpool sighs, telling him, Ah, dream come true. Anyway, how's the guts feeling? Spider-Man leans up from his leaf bed, telling Deadpool that he knows that he's enjoying nursing him back to health to an unhealthy degree, but they really have to get back and stop Itsy Bitsy. Deadpool tells him not to worry. She's moving about 100th the speed that they are, according to his calculations, which he didn't calculate. All he knows is that in this particular pocket universe, accessed by this particular thingamajig that he got off of the gray market moves time faster than back home. 
Spider-Man tells him that there's no proof that they are in a pocket dimension, to which Deadpool opens up a floating zipper which hangs out of Eternity's pocket and says, See? Pocket dimension! Spider-Man then asks if that's true, where are they? And Deadpool shouts, Cleveland! Wait, Weird World! I was gonna bring Sheikla here, but she's currently hates me for being so studly. Hence why I even have this gateway. As Spider-Man gets up, he remembers something else important, and he asks Deadpool, Did you... And Deadpool says, Yes, I totally did! And Spider-Man shouts, You looked under my mask! And Deadpool tells him, Well, not your mask. How else are they supposed to patch you up? Before Spider-Man can ask what he's looking at, a person flies by and Deadpool shouts to them that they are having a delicate conversation in here. The woman on the dragon yells at them, Who dares steal from Morgan Le Fay? And Deadpool shouts back, Who dares start a sentence with who dares? As the Glarko men surround the two of them, Spider-Man attempts to web them up, except nothing happens. When he looks over, he sees Deadpool is taking the liberty of recreating some things. And Deadpool shouts, Who dares question my web-slinging private time? Spider-Man walks over to Morgan Le Fay and tells her, Look, whatever you're planning on doing doesn't mean jack squat. You're just some second-rate sorcerer who used to kick it with King Arthur, and seriously, no one cares. Morgan Le Fay shouts that she will strip them down to their bones for their insolence. And as she touches the spider suit, she finds herself electrocuted. Spider-Man takes back the particular thingamajig, stating, Glad to have some of my spider tech still working. One of the Glarko men shouts that they were slaves and now they're free! And another one shouts that thanks to Spider-Man and Man Nurse, they can resume their eradication of the vile elven filth. Deadpool says that it looks like Weird World's NPCs are kind of going to war. Pretty sure they're talking about genocide. Spider-Man tells him that he heard, and Deadpool says, I know, they gotta do what they gotta do, right? Spider-Man throws the gate key and shouts, Fine. We will stop some fake war between made-up people in a fan-fiction universe. And as the two do just that, they begin to ride Morgan Le Fay's fire-breathing dragon while Wade sings, Fly to the Valkyries! But no sooner do they stop the war than a new threat appears, and the slur burrow out of the ground. But while fighting them off, Deadpool then asks that since they have some time to think here, how exactly are they going to take care of Itsy Bitsy anyway? Spider-Man says actually he was thinking about that. They'll win by any means necessary, and Wade tells him that he really hopes he's not talking about what he thinks he's talking about. Spider-Man goes on to state that he's seen her kind before. Maniacs, sociopaths, the usual stuff doesn't work. Deadpool then says that that would mean that they have to unalive her, right? And last time he checked, that really wasn't on the spider menu. Spider-Man finishes off the last of the slower birth, and he says that he will do whatever is necessary to keep people safe. After taking a look at the gate key, Spider-Man says that ever since Peter Parker came back from the afterlife, he's been stuck. Like there's this feeling of whatever he does, whatever he accomplishes in this world, there will always be something missing. Like the whole thing is just meaningless. He hands back the gate key and he asks if they can just go now. And Deadpool tells him, sure, whatever, just another day battling extra dimensional beings with your hero who wants to kill someone. Let's rush back to the big city where a whole four hours have passed. And Deadpool says that he can't imagine the excitement that they've missed. As the two of them step out of the portal, they see their logo in web with bloody bodies filling it out. Later, as Spider-Man is sitting in a church pew, a voice asks if he wants to talk about it. He says that he's trying to get him to confess, and as the light shines on his bloody mask, he says that it's all because of her. She doesn't hide from them. She isn't afraid. She shows up and does her good work in their names. Anyone Itsy Bitsy deems a threat to society, she kills. Gangsters, supervillains, politicians. Whenever him and Deadpool show up, they lose in minutes of fighting her. He has never seen anything like her. An engine of death, killing people in his name. It's all like he's being tested because he won't embrace the most obvious answer to the problem. The voice then asks, what is that answer? And Peter tells him that it's not the one that Deadpool expected him to find out here. Only an hour before that. Spider-Man throws a pair of swords onto the ground, telling Deadpool that this is stupid. And Deadpool tells him that they have to start somewhere. You're a good fighter, but you're not a great fighter. So I called in some big help. Seconds later, Nightcrawler bamfs in. And Deadpool tells him that he loves bamfing. He wishes that he could bamf. Spider-Man walks off telling him, Yeah, you can enjoy some hero practice. I really don't have time for this. Nightcrawler teleports in front of Spider-Man, telling him that if he cannot find what he needs here, he's free to leave. But give him the courtesy of a good workout. Soon, Spider-Man and Deadpool are sparring with Nightcrawler. And as the fighting continues, Spider-Man gets more and more aggressive. Deadpool shouts to Spider-Man that he isn't even trying anymore. Drones? And Spider-Man tells him to shut up. And Wade tells him, no, this is how you fight to kill someone. Nightcrawler stops telling Spider-Man to wait. And he asks if that was just typical poor Deadpool humor, right? You really don't plan on capturing this woman, do you? Spider-Man swings the sword at Nightcrawler, telling him to shut up. And Deadpool swings down on Spider-Man's sword, telling him to answer the question. We're all friends here. So if you want someone to teach you how to murder, Nightcrawler will help. 
Spider-Man jumps out of way shouting that they're all out of options and out of time. Why are you, of all people, fighting me on this Deadpool? Deadpool kicks him back, telling him it's because watching him crap all over the core beliefs that made him his personal hero makes him sick. So if I have to beat some sense into you, I will. Spider-Man jumps in, stabbing into Wade and throwing the two of them out of the building. Deadpool tells him that it's his honor to be his first stabbing. Nightcrawler jumps in between the two of them to try and break them up, but then Deadpool fires a shot at Nightcrawler, telling him to back off. They've been a power couple for a long time, and frankly, he really doesn't think Spidey has the Macarenas for it. It's people like Spidey that taught him that there's another way. But before he can finish, Spider-Man swings by, cutting off Wade's head, telling him to stop saying that! Now, in the current time, Nightcrawler tells Spider-Man that there are actually quite a few saints who are killers, according to the Vatican. You'd be in fine company. Spider-Man tells him that that doesn't make him feel any better, and Nightcrawler tells him that it shouldn't. He goes on saying that they've known each other for a long time, but never once has he ever harbored a lust for murder. Even in the darkest times, Spider-Man is a legacy, an inspiration, and yes, the righteous path can be a burden. But picture a world without the hope that he represents. Spider-Man tells him that that's the thing. That's the only world that he sees right now. Meanwhile, as Nightcrawler's minions put Deadpool's body back together, Deadpool sits in hell with Sheikla. Deadpool says that he knows that there's a lot going on between them, but Sheikla stops him, telling him that he has two choices. If he wants to save their marriage, come with her right now. Otherwise, go talk to him. Deadpool says that that's not an easy choice, but Sheikla tells him to just go. He only has a few minutes before their help is returned from their break to torture him again. As Deadpool walks into the cell, he tells Patient Zero, Sup! And Zero says, Welcome to my nightmare. Care for a slightly used pineapple? Wade says that now he knows that that is actually a thing, he's a little skeeved. So tell him why he was after him and Webb so they can stop Itsy Bitsy. Zero begins to take off his mask, telling them that that's a lot to cram into five minutes. But I've become somewhat of an expert of cramming. As the mask comes off, Wade sees that Patient Zero is in fact Weasel. Deadpool punches him first, saying that he hates when the internet is right about the guessing. Weasel gets in Deadpool's face, telling him that he created Itsy Bitsy, which, by the way, is a dumb name, to show the world what a monster Wade Wilson really is. Deadpool tells him that people can change, but what about Spidey? He then begins to choke Weasel as he rambles on that he found himself a partner with a mutual taste for darkness, and a serious mad on for his best pal. Deadpool wakes back up in the real world, quietly saying that he knows everything, and after he looks around, he asks, where's Webs? Nightcrawler tells him that he's lost and he points towards the altar. Deadpool sees the words, do not follow, written in webbing. And Nightcrawler says that Spider-Man is on a destructive path. If Deadpool has any part to play in the rescue, he must go now. Find him before he finds Itsy Bitsy, or he fears that he will make a terrible mistake and his soul will be lost forever. Says teaming up with Spider-Man, Wade has been learning how to be a better person by not killing people. Whereas Spider-Man has been slowly getting pushed over the edge to be forced into killing Itsy Bitsy since she has been making kills across the city of New York in their name. The names of Spider-Man and Deadpool. As the two sparred, Spider-Man cut Wade's head off and sent him to hell. Where he learned who Patient Zero was, which was Weasel. His entire storyline is laid out in a playlist that I will be linking down below. And this is the conclusion to Itsy Bitsy. As Wade finally manages to catch up with Spider-Man, he sees that Spidey has had some upgrades to his suit. Wade says, uh, by the way, your fly is totally down. That aside, cutting off my head was the least subtle way to end our play date so that you could go on a murder spree. Spider-Man tells him that he, uh, he's sorry for what happened back there with Kurt. But this isn't a murder spree. This is one. He's not. Wade looks at him, telling him, look. We've done the whole song and dance thing about this, so I'm just gonna go on one final pitch of sanity with you. Back when you gave me the ultimate haircut, I dropped in to see our old pal, Patient Zero. The guy who started all of this, and beneath all of that emo gear that he was wearing, he was my ex-sidekick, Weasel. Turns out Weasel hated me, and he struck a deal with the Netherworld, and he came back from hell to execute a plan for some big wig demon that apparently has a mad heart on for Spider-Man. Everything that we've been through, the whole Parker setup, the robbery, Itsy Bitsy, it's all been a game to push you over the edge. And Spider-Man shouts, why? Why would they create that monster? And Wade tells him that this is what they wanted. You're soaking it all in right now. Kurt mentions that this would have been a battle for your soul. And I'm pretty sure that Kurt was being kind of literal. Up above the two of them, Itsy Bitsy is listening in and she says that this is where you're finally going to kiss. Or are you going to skip to the part where you tear it up? Spider-Man pushes Wade back and he jumps in telling Itsy Bitsy, this is your last chance. If you don't stop what you're doing, you're gonna die tonight. And she shouts that she's never been more turned on by Spider Daddy. So please, enlighten her. As Wade gets back up, Spider-Man radios to him that they really need to talk. And a beep goes off on Wade's phone. As he looks at it, he sees a picture of his daughter with a shining Spider-Man doll. 
Spider-Man says that he didn't want him to get in his way. But the cloaking systems installed in his house will only be on for so long. So unless he goes back and deactivates that doll, that doll will broadcast its location to everyone that Deadpool has ever pissed off across the galaxy. As Spider-Man chases Itsy Bitsy, she asks, Why don't we just team up? We can take down the criminal empires! Stop the crooked justice system! In fact, it's our responsibility with powers like this! Peter shouts that their responsibility does not include playing God, and he doesn't want to do this. Itsy Bitsy jumps on Spider-Man, telling him that he's lying! She can't tell, though, because she can't see his lips moving underneath that mask. The cannon on Spider-Man's shoulder begins to burn away at one of Itsy Bitsy's arms, and Spider-Man says that she's right. He was lying. He was reading up on her, and he found that her regenerative capabilities are off the charts, and that blast Parker Industries clean energy, basically a mini power plant on his shoulder. With that, he can dissect her at the atomic level and stop her. So this is her final warning. Itsy Bitsy swings back, telling him that she would like to make a retort. And then she fires her gun, shooting off one of Spider-Man's mechanical arms. Spider-Man falls down into the shipping containers below. And Itsy Bitsy jumps down, pulling out a sword, saying, This is all boring! And she's gonna end this now! And just before she can swing down, another sword is thrown through the two arms, holding down Spider-Man. Spider-Man looks up and Wade tells him, Now, we've got to go get the transmitter. Wade then stops Spider-Man, telling him, I know you're really twisted right now, but you would never put a little girl's life in danger because of it. Tell me that I'm wrong. Spider-Man remains silent and Wade tells him, Say it! Tell me that you wouldn't just kill a little girl because of some dumb midlife crisis. Itsy Bitsy attacks and Spider-Man shouts, She's fine! Are you happy now? I was bluffing. Wade gets pushed back and two more swords are thrown, pinning him into a container. And Itsy Bitsy says, You know, the three of us could have made a beautiful babies! Spider-Man then webs up Itsy's leg and swings her back into a tarp-covered object. As she hits it, her body begins to disintegrate. Spider-Man says that that's the clean energy that he was talking about. It's a plasma breeder which essentially duplicates the conditions of the sun for a billionth of the second. Itsy's upper half begins to fall to the ground and Wade shouts, yeah, we did it! Now we just gotta cover up in some hard gel and... and Spider-Man stops, I'm telling him, You aren't listening. We trap her, she'll regenerate, and she'll escape. This ends now. Spider-Man picks up Itzy's body and she tells him to do it. Show some spine! Be all that you can be. End it, or I'll swear I'll go back to wear this city like a skin suit. Spider-Man sighs. I know, which is why we're gonna have to take a stroll in my son in a box. God forgive me. But before he can throw her in it, a bullet grazes by his shoulder and Wade jumps down telling him, Look, this is me begging you not to do it, Spider-Man. And Spider-Man looks at Wade telling him, I'm sorry. And as Wade pulls down his mask, he says, Yeah, samesies. Meanwhile, down in hell, the Festo shouts that the beloved Spider-Man, so special, so pure, so lost. Hopefully everyone likes downers because today the soul of a hero will burn. Back up on Earth, Spider-Man pulls away one of Wade's guns, telling him that this has to be done. And Wade shouts that he understands. He has a PhD in making craft decisions, and this is one of them. There has to be a super max prison somewhere that can handle her, or a parallel dimension. Maybe we could have just called the Dragon Balls and wished her away. Spider-Man tells him, actually, I didn't think of that one, Wade. Oh, right, they don't exist. As Wade and Spider-Man begin to fight, Itsy watches and waits and regenerates. Spider-Man knocks away Wade, so Itsy jumps up onto Spider-Man, telling him that he isn't killing anyone today, though she was impressed that he came so close! She then throws Spider-Man over towards Wade, that they should just talk about it for a second. They can create a new normal! Spider-Man jumps back in, telling her that he is done talking! And as Itsy goes on, Wade listens, saying, This is the scary part. Spider-Man's not responding anymore. No jokes, no nothing, just fighting. Spider-Man then grabs one of Itsy's legs and rips it off! And he begins to beat her with it! Itsy stops moving, and Spider-Man says that there's a hole inside of him. One that he thought that if he kept fighting would shrink, but it's not working! Wade tells him that he knows a lot about holes, and a lot about what they should and should not be filled with. But murder, even righteous, justice-fueled murder, isn't going to help! It'll just pull you apart. Spider-Man tells him he knows he... But before he can finish, Wade punches him, calling him a coward. You want to throw your life away for this one psychopath? You know what? Screw it! It's your life! He then pulls the pins on all of his smoke grenades, tossing them. As the smoke clouds the area, Spider-Man grabs Itsy by the arm, and then he holds her into the plasma breeder, burning her alive! As Spider-Man steps back, Wade asks him, How did it feel? Spider-Man, completely justifiable righteous murderer. Mephesto watches, stating, No. And Wade goes on asking, Did it make you feel whole? Because that was brought to you by one of your glorious image-inducing vision machines. Which, by the way, I owe you a new image-inducing vision machine. 
Spider-Man steps out of the smoke and Wade turns back to the circling news helicopter shouting that the bad guy is dead. The day is saved! Now make sure to edit this so that it was Deadpool who saved the day with the killing. Spider-Man walks over asking him why. He would have done it, he would have killed. And Wade stops him telling him, yeah, I know you would have. The world would have been a much nastier place for it too, hence plan B. Wade walks off telling him, don't worry, I'll hit up an Assassin's Anonymous meeting, so don't look so sad, we won. The next morning atop the Brooklyn Bridge, Spider-Man watches the sun rise eating tubs of ice cream. Wade walks up telling him, you know, if you keep eating that, you're gonna have to let the belt out on that suit. Spider-Man stops and he asks him, do people really change? Like after a certain point, are we locked into who we are? And Wade says that after their uproarious little adventure, I can definitely say I have no freaking clue. Spider-Man looks at Wade's scarred face and Wade says, yeah, I had to cancel my proactive spokesmodel thing, but at least my arm's growing back, so there's that. As Wade tries to pull his mask down, Spider-Man tells him that he almost compromised everything that he's ever fought for to try and make the pain go away. And Wade asks him, who hasn't? I've tried booze, dry goods, punching, killing bad guys, and only one thing seems to work. Spider-Man tells him, it's friends, people who you love, doing good things. And Wade follows up with, actually it is booze, but sure, love. Spider-Man hugs Wade telling him that he knows what he sacrificed for him, and he swears that he'll make it up to him. And as Spider-Man webs off, he shouts to call him when he's ready. And Wade waves, flapping his tiny little arm, saying, Yeah, we should do this again sometime. And there you have it, today's full story. I hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell right here on this channel, as it will only ever be receiving full stories from the other channel. And if you want to see the videos as they come out, make sure you go check out the Comic Story and Main channel, where you get five days of videos a week. I'll see you next time.